Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about urine chloride, urine ketone bodies, urine cortisol, urine uric acid, beta-2 microglobulin, sputum sampling, Benz-Jones proteins, immunosyntigraphy. Today, it's time to talk about another technique, urine electrophoresis, electrical separation. Separate the proteins using an electrical current. This may help you diagnose multiple myeloma, which is characterized by CRAB65. What's the C? Hypercalcemia. What's the R? Renal failure. What's the A? Anemia. That's normal cytic and normal chromic. B. Bone problems and bone pain. 65, usually an old guy. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. And if you wanna dig deep into the topic of protein isolation and analysis, such as electrophoresis and chromatography, I have a video about this topic in my biochemistry playlist. Why are we doing this? Why are you trying to separate proteins using electricity? Because in order for me to study the protein, I need to separate the protein first. If I cannot isolate the protein, I cannot study it. Which means I cannot diagnose the patient, which means I cannot treat the patient. Protein isolation techniques in general. Separate the protein by isolation or purification, then study it. How do I separate the protein? Well, there are many methods. First, you crush the cell then centrifugation, then use another isolation technique, such as electrophoresis, which has many types, and chromatography, chromo means color, which also has many types. We're talking about electrophoresis today. To understand the topic, remember that your blood is made of plasma, fluid, and cells. The cells are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The plasma is mostly water and some proteins, mainly albumin, but some globulin as well. Functions of albumin are many, including it contributes to the oncotic pressure and it's a carrier for many other non-water soluble molecules in the blood. Next, we have globulin, alpha globulin, beta globulin, and gamma globulin. Alpha globulins include alpha-1 antitrypsin and angiotensinogen. Beta globulins are the famous coagulation factors and transferrin. The gamma globulins are your antibodies. We perform electrophoresis to see if the albumins and globulins in your body are normal or abnormal. That's why we want to separate those proteins. Electrophoresis, what's going on here? A power supply will provide us with two poles. Here is the positive electrode or the anode and the negative electrode or the cathode. Why do you call the positive electrode anode? Because it will attract the anions. The anions are the negatively charged particles. In this case, it's the proteins. Because the proteins in your body are negatively charged for the most part. So these negatively charged proteins will leave this negative electrode and will be attracted to the positive electrode. But how fast will they migrate is the question. This speed of migration is determined by the size of the protein and the charge of the protein. Let's talk about the size. Smaller particles travel faster, of course, whereas larger particles travel slower. That makes sense. And therefore, you'll see a difference between albumin and globulin. Albumin is faster, globulin is slower. Why is that? Because albumin is smaller, globulin is bigger. The next factor is that charges. Proteins are negatively charged. They are attracted to the positive electrode. Many particles of your body are negatively charged, but some are more negative than others, which matters when it comes to electrophoresis. So the migration velocity, or how fast they migrate, is determined by the strength of the electrical field, which depends on the power supply, and the net charge, divided by the frictional coefficient, which depends on the mass and the irregularity of the particle. And the medium that we use is usually polyacrylamide gel. That's why we call it gel electrophoresis. Or you can use another type, which is the sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS. To diagnose multiple myeloma, we need many things, the most accurate of which is bone marrow biopsy. Other techniques that are less invasive include electrophoresis and immunofixation. 
Multiple myeloma is one of the plasma cell disorders. I've talked about this topic in detail in my hematology playlist on YouTube. Here's the lovely bone marrow, myeloid stem cells versus lymphoid stem cells. Myeloid will give us red blood cells, platelets, and many white blood cells except lymphocytes. Lymphocytes come from lymphoid lineage or lymphoid stem cells. We have B lymphocytes, we have T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes will mature into plasma cells these are the cells that give us antibodies or immunoglobulins and antibodies are gamma globulins and globulins are proteins that can be separated by electricity hence electrophoresis b lymphocyte plasma cell before you know it we have antibodies how many types of antibodies do we have we have many based on the heavy chain we have five types IgM, IgA, IgE, IgE, and IgD. And then each heavy chain can be matched with light chain. So I can be an IgM antibody with kappa or an IgM with lambda. I could be IgG with kappa or IgG with lambda, depending on the type of the heavy chain and the type of the light chain. If I have multiple myeloma, which is cancer, I'll have tons of antibodies, usually of one type only, because cancer for the most part is monoclonal, one crazy cell. So one type of antibodies will be available in unlimited abundance in the body. You can find this in the blood, you can find this in the urine. And if you wanna take this topic to the next level, please watch my video on Benz Jones proteins. Electrophoresis means electrical separation. You'll find the word phoresis many times in medicine. Plasmapheresis, leukapheresis. So phoresis or apheresis means to separate or to wash away. And then when you do electrophoresis, whether you do this on the blood or on the urine, you can draw a graph. Here is albumin. As you know, normally albumin is the most abundant protein. We're talking normal now. Then alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, and gamma, all of these are what? Globulins. And here is normal. But in multiple myeloma, I have tons of antibodies, which are gamma globulins. So instead of this, I'll see this. And this is a spike. It's an M spike, a monoclonal spike, or M component spike, or church spire peak. A very common mistake that students make is that they remember the M spike, so they say that this patient has to have IgM type of multiple myeloma. No, IgM is not the most common type of multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is usually IgG or IgA. IgM is a different disease known as Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, another plasma cell dyscrasia, which I've talked about before in my hematology playlist. That's why we do electrophoresis on the serum or on the urine. However, there is a problem with the electrophoresis. It will tell you that this patient is having tons of gamma globulins, which means many antibodies. But it will never tell you if the antibody is IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, or IgD. It was not gonna tell you whether this is lambda or kappa light chain. So electrophoresis, what's the good thing? It can tell you that this patient is having too many or too little gamma globulins. What's the bad thing? It cannot tell you the type of the antibody. It cannot tell you the type of the heavy chain it cannot tell you the type of the light chain. In other words, electrophoresis is quantitative, but not qualitative. Here is serum protein electrophoresis. It can quantify the M spike. However, it's not qualitative. It cannot tell you whether it's kappa or lambda. It cannot tell you whether it's IgG, IgA, etc. How about urine protein electrophoresis? Again, it will quantify light chains. It will tell you this patient has tons of Benz Jones light chain protein in the urine. Okay, was it kappa or lambda? No clue. How should I know then if electrophoresis is not gonna tell me? Welcome to the world of immunofixation and immunoelectrophoresis. These methods can tell you the type of the antibody, i.e. these new techniques are qualitative, not quantitative. Immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation techniques will look something similar to this. Look at this. Where's the problem? Oh, I see a problem here and a problem here. So this patient has IgG with lambda light chain. The problem with immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation is that it tells you the type, but it does not tell you the quantity. And that's why you need to do both. And don't forget history, physical exam, and other labs. So you saw a patient who's 70 years old, bone pain, high calcium, high creatinine, ordered serum protein electrophoresis, you saw the M spike. So now I know that this patient 
has tons of gamma globulins, tons of antibodies. What type of antibody? Let's go to immunofixation. Oh, it's IgG kappa. From this and this, we can say that this patient has monoclonal gammopathy subtype IgG kappa. Here's the heavy chain, here's the light chain. Can all of this confirm the diagnosis of multiple myeloma? No, you will need bone marrow biopsy for that. You can learn more about multiple myeloma, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, and other pathologies in my hematology playlist. And you can learn about trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, ENT surgery, pediatric surgery, ophthalmology, and much more by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. You will also learn about this Volkmann contracture. If you want to learn about vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, and other topics, download my OBGYN high yields course at metagosisperfectionalis.com. If you want to test your knowledge on hematology, I have 50 cases ready for you at metagosisperfectionalis.com. Get instant access to more than 300 premium videos by clicking on the join button and choosing the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website, to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.